Have you been wanting to use Adobe InDesign to create your own beautiful PDFs, digital downloads, freebies, lead magnets, content upgrades, workbooks, whatever it is, but you're just a little overwhelmed when you open it by all of the panels and the features? Well, today I'm going to show you my top five tools that I think you need to know to be up and running and producing your own beautiful digital downloads. Hi, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous Designs, and I help online businesses to create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. Now, if that sounds like something you're interested in, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. I'm going to assume that you already have Adobe InDesign loaded and ready to go on your machine. And if you don't, I have another video that has different purchase options and exactly how to do that. Now I'm on a Mac and on a Mac, you can access the Adobe InDesign application three different ways. You can simply go to the Go menu and Applications and you should find it there. And it will also have previous versions that you may have loaded on your machine. The second option is to go to your launch pad and find the icon directly inside there. And the third option is to go to the Creative Cloud icon at the top right and simply select Adobe InDesign from there. Now inside here, you're going to go ahead and create new. So we're all looking at the same document. Let's change those units to inches if yours isn't already changed. And let's go ahead and assume someone's going to print this out and it's going to be on standard paper that they're going to three hole punch and put into a binder. So we'll make this eight and a half by 11. We'll make sure that this says or portrait and not landscape. And then down here for margins, let's make all of these top, bottom, right and left one inch margins so that people have enough room to uh, three hole punch. And then you'll go ahead and click create. You could ignore bleed and slug. All right, the pink and the purple lines are simply there as guides. These tell you that this is giving you a one inch margin all around. Now it's a little odd, I shouldn't say odd, it's very different than Microsoft Word in that it's not going to uh, force you to follow the rules of the margin. So if you decide, hey, I don't, I want to put text or images over here in the margin, you can, whereas Microsoft Word, you cannot. So that's another huge advantage and that's also a reason that people use this for printing so that ink goes all the way to the edge and doesn't, um, it does what's called a bleed, right? All right, so over here, uh, this is what my workspace looks like. Yours may look different. If it does, don't worry about it. Uh, if you go to window and workspace and you just make sure there's a check mark in front of typography, it should look at least somewhat similar to my workspace. Now inside my workspace, uh, the most important tool for you, I think to start out is the type tool so that you can type some text. Now the type tool works unlike any other application you've ever, ever seen. It does not work like Adobe Photoshop. It does not work like uh, Illustrator or Word or anything else. You must create a text box that contains the text. And the reason they do that is because text, remember, can move around objects and the application needs to know which text you're referring to. So we are going to simply drag and drop a box uh, and that's my text box. And so those blue lines now are the, the boundaries of the text box. They will not show up when you print. So over here, it should have defaulted to the color black. Um, and let's just type in something simple like, what is your name? There we go. Now, if I want to change this font over here at the top, the menu, once the type tool is selected, the menu changes to be, I would say somewhat more standard, like Microsoft Word, you have center, you can write justify, um, left justify, and you can change the font over here. And you can also change the size. So let's say we want to make this 60. I mean, maybe that's too big. 45. How's that? What is your name? Now, you'll notice there's all this extra space down here. It is still You'll notice once I change over to the second tool, you should know about the selection tool. Uh, you'll notice I've now selected that text box. And if I move it, um, that entire box moves. And that box is pretty big. I don't really need a box that big. So I'm going to take my arrow or my mouse and I'm going to hover right around this bottom. And I'm going to just scroll it up. Now the selection tool is selecting that entire box so that you can move it around. And all of these little brackets here are going to make it so you can um, resize that whole box if you take a corner 
or if you take the bottom or the side, it will just resize those areas there. Now the third tool I think you will want to know is the rectangle tool. So when I say what is your name, um, I possibly want to leave a box for them so they can put that in there. So over here on the left I have the rectangle tool and also if you hover on any of these tools the name of the tool will pop up for you and because InDesign likes to make it even more difficult there are tools hidden within tools. So if I right click on this I'll see that it also contains the ellipse tool and it also contains a polygon tool, uh, but we just want the rectangle tool. So we're going to line it up here and we're going to create a box so someone can write their name. Now this box right now is possibly invisible over here because this is the border. It's called the stroke and we're going to go ahead and select black so that it can show up. And let's move it. We're going to go back to our selection tool. We're going to select that rectangle box and we're going to oops, move it up. Why can't I move it? There we go. And that's our box. So don't worry too much. I know it looks a little confusing because the rectangle border and the um, text border look exactly the same. So if you want to see what this looks like without the margins, you can make sure one that you have the selection tool selected and then you can just hit the letter W and that will take the margins away. So this is what your document will look like when you print it. Now if I hit W again, I will get my margins back. Now if you forget to do that, you can simply go over here to View, and when you go to View, you can go to Presentation, and then you can see what it's going to look like when it prints as well. So let's hit Escape to get out of there. So, so far you've learned the type tool, you have learned the selection tool, and you've learned the rectangle tool. So the third tool I think you should learn is the placement tool. So the placement tool is how you place objects and images inside of InDesign. Now inside Adobe InDesign you're going to go to File and you're going to Place. I know that sounds so counterintuitive, but that's how you add um, images. So we're going to go to our desktop and I have my logo here and I'm simply going to select that and I'm going to say open. Now you'll notice I have what's called a loaded cursor in InDesign so I'm just going to drag and drop this where I want my image to go. Now I actually want this to go to the top so I'm going to make sure I have the selection tool selected. I'm going to highlight these two items and I'm going to drag them down here and then I'm going to take my logo and I'm going to move it to the top. So now we have a little bit of a gap so we're going to move this up and now it's perfect. So it's right in the exact right place. So if I want to see what this looks like again without margins, I can just go to view and I can go to presentation. There we go. So now I have my logo, I have what is your name, and I have a box. Now you'll notice this looks like it's a little um, stretched, uh, let's say. So if I go to view, overprint preview, and I go to view, display mode, oh, I guess I already have it high quality, um, that should help with the display only because Adobe InDesign uses a lot of memory and so it, isn't going to, it is not going to show everything at the highest resolution because it is trying to help you by showing things at lower resolutions so that it can save some memory on your computer, especially once you get into like a 50 or 60 page document. All right, so that is the fourth tool that we learned. So the first was the text, the second was the rectangle box, the third was the selection tool, and the fourth was how to place objects. Now, inside objects, there's two things you need to know. One is your objects are are objects within an object box. So let's say I want to make this smaller. Now intuitively, because of the way you probably use it in other applications, you'd think I have the selection tool selected, I'm gonna to go to a corner and I'm going to make this smaller. And you'll notice that didn't work. It didn't shrink your object for you. So let's go ahead and hit Control Z. Now the second tool that you're going to, or the last tool you're going to learn is what's called the direct selection tool. So once you hit this, you're going to see a hand. 
instead of an arrow. And that means once you click inside there, it has directly selected, just like it's called the direct selection tool, the object, the image inside of the larger object box. Now these different arrows will work how you want them to work. Now I want to change this uniformly. So I'm going to make sure I have the shift key selected. I'm going to go to the bottom right corner and I'm going to make this smaller. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to the selection tool and now it's selected. So if I select this again, you can see my object box is still large, but the actual tool, the actual image inside is smaller. And the only way to grab that is through the direct selection tool. So that's usually, I think, probably the number one most frustrating thing for people when they're first starting out is understanding that the box that contains an object, whether that's an image or it's a text box or your rectangle, is completely independent of the uh, contents within that box. So you can't resize the box. It won't resize the images inside there. Those have to be done separately, just like this um, text box i'll show you if i have the direct the main selection selected and i try to make this smaller again it's just going to cut off that part of what is your it's missing the word name um, and you'll notice notice this in the text box it will actually give you a little plus red sign um, i won't confuse you by going into that but to fix that you can just make that that box bigger. Um, or alternatively, if I really just don't want the text to go beyond that, I can simply go ahead, select the text tool. I can do control A to select all that text because remember I can't see everything now. And I can make this smaller, so I can make this a 30. And now if I change the text to a 30 and I select that box, we can see that it fits. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I went over a little, I meant to do this in 10 minutes or less, but those are the top five tools to get you up and running so you can start creating workbooks or documents that you want to do inside Adobe InDesign. All right, if you're interested in learning more, I have a free course called Adobe InDesign 101, and I will leave the link for signing up for that in the description below. All right. Bye guys.